Yes. I do hold respons them responsible in the sense that they're supplying the weapons to the people who did it. Well, we'll have that discussion. We'll see. I don't think we need a wider war in the Middle East. That's not what I'm looking for. Donald Trump be allowed on the ballot. As far as I'm concerned, that's fine. Why do you need the polls if he's a threat to democracy, as you say? Because guys like you. Jesus, man. Executive authority, where is there more you could do after the all I can do? Give me the power. I've asked for the very day I got in office. Give me the border patrol. Give me the people, give me the people to judge it. Give me the people who can stop this and make it work right. And there are some concerns in the party about the possible escalation of military involvement in the Middle East. Search the search. We'll see. We will respond. The White House on Monday said U.S. President Joe Biden was weighing his options. After the drone attack in Jordan by Iran-backed militants that killed three U.S. service members and wounded dozens more. Here's White House National Security Spokesperson John Kirby. We do not seek another war. We do not seek to escalate. But we will absolutely do what is required to protect ourselves, to continue that mission, and to respond appropriately to these attacks. Earlier in the day, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin spoke on the issue as well. The President and I will not tolerate attack on U.S. forces, and we will take all necessary actions to defend the U.S. and our troops. Later, Pentagon spokesperson Sabrina Singh identified the soldiers killed in Sunday's attack, the youngest victim just 23 years old. The names of those soldiers who lost their lives were Sergeant William Rivers, Specialist Kennedy Sanders, and Specialist Breonna Moffitt. Right now, we assess that there are more than 40 that have been injured. Um, we do expect that number to continue to fluctuate as uh, our service members, as you know with TBI, report symptoms later on, so that number could continue to grow. The attack put new political pressure on Biden to deal a blow directly against Iran, a step he has been reluctant to take out of fear of igniting a broader war. Sunday's strike marks the first deadly attack against U.S. troops since the Israel-Hamas war erupted in October. The United States is trying to determine how the suicide drone managed to evade the base's defenses. What I can definitely say is that the strikes that took place on U.S. service members represent a fundamental change in the rules of engagement. Allison McManus, the managing director of the Department of National Security at the Center of American Progress, says she anticipates a response to the drone attack quite soon. Iran has taken advantage 
frankly, of the the current moment of conflict to do what Iran has been doing for many, many years, which is to disrupt, uh, to target the U.S. and partners in a variety of ways, uh, mostly through uh, the efforts of its um, proxy militias. So again, what Iran is doing is testing where that line is, how much it can get away with in uh, targeting U.S. interests, whether those are military interests or economic interests, um, and, and really testing the U.S. in terms of its response. U.S. troops have been attacked over 150 times in Iraq, Syria, and Jordan, as well as on warships in the Red Sea, where Houthi fighters in Yemen have been firing drones and missiles at them. We got to focus on. We got to focus on. And we in my church have taken the 21st Psalm. I want to point out that uh, we had a tough day last night in the Middle East. We lost three brave souls in an attack on one of our base. Yes. And uh, I'd ask you to come in silence for all three of those small souls. Jesus. And we shall respond. God bless you all. Thank you for allowing me to be here. And I wish you didn't have to go. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Three U.S. service members were killed and dozens more wounded after a drone attack on U.S. forces stationed in Jordan. A person familiar with the matter identified the base as Tower 22 in northeastern Jordan, an outpost near the Syrian border shown in this still taken before the attack. U.S. Central Command said at least 34 were injured, with that number expected to change as more seek care. It's the first deadly strike against U.S. forces since the Israel-Hamas war erupted in October and sent shockwaves throughout the Middle East. Jordan, which holds extensive exercises with U.S. troops throughout the year, condemned the attack in a statement. At a campaign stop in South Carolina on Sunday, U.S. President Joe Biden asked for a moment of silence for the fallen soldiers and vowed to respond. In a statement, the White House blamed Iran-backed groups for the attack. The Islamic Resistance in Iraq, an umbrella organization of hardline Iran-backed militant groups, claimed attacks on three bases, including one on the Jordan-Syria border. U.S. forces have come under attack more than 150 times by Iran-backed groups in Iraq and Syria since October. While the United States has maintained that Washington is not at war in the region, it has been retaliating against the Iran-backed groups in Iraq and Syria and carrying out strikes against Yemen's Houthi military capabilities.